So in this week's Spotlight, we've got the extraordinary talent of Mr. Mark Draper. He's a photographer from Essex and he specialises in nature and wildlife. We're going to sit him down and pick his brains. Not literally. Well, I suppose I've always been into the wildlife side of things since I could walk. You know, that was always been a for my favourite thing in life, really, I suppose, you know. Yeah, and then, I don't know, I suppose I had a camera when I was sort of nine, ten years old, yeah. given to me by my nana, I think it was at the time. Right. It must have been someone like that. It was, this thing was a relic, right. you know. At the time, this was in the 80s, you know, and this was a relic, so... Right. You had to use your hands yeah, to wind it, wind it all back. I mean, you didn't even know what you was taking, did you, back then, you know? Smile. So when did you first know you wanted to be a photographer? I remember getting this one shot of a rhino. A what? A rhino. A culture to zoo. Oh. Okay. With blue sky and this rhino and that was it. Okay. You know, I had the bug. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And that was that was that was the moment I so, think when it grabbed me. Around here somewhere. Nah, nah. <laughs> culture to zoo's the place to be, man. Yeah. <laughs> Don't come here. No. What's your favourite subject to photograph? Probably owls. Because I don't know, I've got this thing with owls. I think there's something hypnotic about watching owls hunt and especially barn owls. And then closely followed by the night sky. Yes. You know, I do like to be out in the dark when there's no one else about. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite safe for the virus, do you know what I mean? Yes. I won't get no virus at two o'clock in the morning at most for church, yeah. Where do you find the inspiration for your shots? Most of my stuff I find driving around the lanes, if I'm honest. Right. Even my landscape stuff, my night stuff, it's all inspired by what I see on my travels, really. So when you're on the move? When I'm on the move, and I'm yeah. one eye on that. Oh, there's a dead tree in the middle of a field. Yeah. I'll have to come back and check where the light pollution lies for that, you know, and everything's a repeat mission, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's the dedication yeah, that gets yeah. the good shots, ultimately. What best practices do you put in place in your approach? I mean, everywhere can get over photographed. Every subject can get over photographed. When you start getting down to individual animals and birds that are getting over photographed, you're causing a problem. You know, you're just gonna ultimately you can scare that bird off and then no one gets to see it, let alone photograph it. You can go and find this wildlife in any part of the countryside in any part of the country. At the minute there's a barn owl hunting nearly every farm in East Anglia, probably beyond. It's a good time to find them, and it's the half the trick is to go out at the right time. You know, so the start of the day, at the end of the day, everything's more active. So, how do we find out more about your tutorials? I do like group sessions every like at least once a week, and I do like one to ones at least once a week as well, more if possible whenever they arise. Really, yes. normally the one to one stuff is the wildlife stuff. Can't get too close with a group of people, really. It sort of yeah, defeats the object of how I like to take my pictures. You know, yeah. sort of, you want to be creeping up on things. You want to be inconspicuous. Yeah. MD photography on Facebook. Yeah, and if okay. anyone's interested in like doing the workshops, search for Team Essex Photography. That's my photography group. Definitely go and check out Mark's Facebook. He's got some amazing pictures up there. But we're off on a secret mission now. And Mark's asked us specifically not to divulge where we're going, and I'm sure you'll see why in a minute. The primroses are out, and spring is definitely on its way. North Essex is a great place to explore at this time of year. You've just got to know where and when to look. Right, Mark, what have we got here then? <laughs> well, this is a nice little local pair of tawny owls we've had here for the last four or five years. We've been quite lucky, they coppiced all this little spinny down and all of a sudden a friend of mine said it looks like there's two owls in the tree at the back. <laughs> so we come up and had a look and uh, so be it, they're there almost every day of the year, so they sit in that hole. Mm. Apart from when she hopefully, well we think she must go on to eggs and she disappears down into the trunk but he still sits at that bottom of the hole there. The tawny is one of our most common owls and can be found across Britain in woodland and in suburban gardens too. Listen out for the... So do they spook quite easily? These aren't too bad really, they don't really spook at all. If you, I've had photos of they dive down every once in a while, but they're not really bothered. A lot of people walk their dogs up and down here. As long as you keep your distance, it's about respect ultimately, you know? Yes, 100%. You know, if you lose that respect, you lose the view of it. It's as simple as that, you know? Yes. It only takes one person to go in and scare them off, and then no one gets to see them. Yeah, of course. But lucky enough, most people have been quite respectful up there, so... Nice. 
so you want to kind of give them a bit of space. That's and, ultimately, yeah. yeah, it's all about respect, isn't it? Yeah. Every subject that you take in pictures of, you need to respect it. Yeah. Leave nothing but footprints. That's, that's one of my strap lines. So there you go. <laughs> Leave nothing but footprints. I love that. So let's get down to the nitty gritty of this. What are your top three wildlife photography tips then, Mark? Stay low. By staying low, you can create an intimacy in your photography. Being eye level puts the viewer into the subject's world. Get yourself some camo netting. Wildlife can be extremely nervous, so blending into the environment is key. Camouflage is a great way to get closer to your subject. Can you see me? Most of the time. You don't always need to find the animals to have a good day. Finding signs of wildlife can be just as rewarding as finding the wildlife itself. You never know what's nearby. And there we have it. Three top tips to help you improve your wildlife photography. Oi, that's my signature. Okay, so what's your favourite picture ever? My favourite picture is one I'm going to take tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> there was one morning, a nice frosty morning in February last year, and the barn had been showing well, so I'd headed out nice and early to get there before first light. And it was the most beautiful frosty morning, and this barn house just hunting around all these, well, like dead seed heads. And it just made such a story in the image, do you know what I mean? It just sort of made something. A picture of a barn owl is just a picture of a barn owl. But when you put it in a perspective of a story, it's something that's original. It makes something out of it. It makes, it tells a story, it does a job, you know? It's ultimately, I want my pictures to look individual, unique. I want a feeling from it. I want to make it tell me how it, how it felt to be that day. And I felt cold. And the picture makes it look that cold. What a great day. Big thanks to you, Mark, and I look forward to working with you again very soon. If you're interested in doing a tutorial with Mark, head over to his Facebook page, which is MD Photography. Thank you.